Welcome to another Crown and Comments with Cruise Man. Tonight we're going to wrap up the three-part Rectoride series, talk about my accident in West Texas. We have a lot of ground to cover tonight. I'm going to talk to you about some things I have not shared with you yet. I'm going to tell you about my experience with the insurance company and dealing with the Honda dealer repair process. So you want to make sure you watch till the very end. I have some suggestions that might help you just in case, God forbid, you find yourself in a situation like I was in a couple of months ago. And, of course, I'm going to respond to your comments about this accident. I mean, after all, this is Crown and Comments. I have my Crown Royal, and over here i got my MacBook Pro with all of your comments. So let's get started. This video is sponsored by Cruise Man's Garage Honda Goldwing Maintenance Video Series. Now, over the past few weeks, some of you asked me exactly what parts are being replaced on my Honda Goldwing, or were replaced, I should say. So I brought the list. This is the last, uh, I guess you call this the supplemental, but this is the last list I got from Progressive. So I'm just going to read through some of the big stuff. There might be some nuts and bolts I'm not going to mention, but I will mention the big stuff. The front fender was replaced along with all of the front fender uh, bracketry and nuts and bolts and stuff like that. The right front lower collar, the front cowl panel, which I believe is what they refer to as what I call the windshield garnish just below the windshield, the painted part. Another windshield garnish, which I believe is the shiny plastic piece that has the word Honda on it. The front inner cowl panel assembly, the right inner cowl panel, the front wheel, the right front brake disc, and the left front brake disc, the left front ABS sensor, as far as I know there's not one on the right, the front suspension fork, the upper front suspension seal, the upper front suspension bearing, a Bridgestone etc. tire, and that's pretty much it. Now, there's a few other parts that are on here, but th I'll talk about those in a little bit. Now, many of you suggested that the motorcycle should have been totaled when you saw the pictures of the accident. And honestly, I sort of felt the same way. My first gut reaction was, boy, am I ever going to be able to trust this bike again? Uh, is it ever going to ride the same? Uh, maybe it would be better to just have it totaled. And I lobbied for that with Progressive initially. That was my, like I say, that was kind of my gut reaction. But that didn't happen. Progressive decided not to total the motorcycle and instead to have it repaired. My fears were not unfounded. Um, a few years ago, many years ago, I had a Honda Accord, probably a 1990 model. And I went through an intersection and... Uh, pickup truck ran a red light and I T-boned him and it pretty much crumpled the front end of the car. Nobody was injured fortunately, but the car had to be towed into a Honda dealer to be repaired, had to replace the radiator, a bunch of the structure, new hood, all that kind of stuff, front bumpers, everything. I got the car back a little over a month later and you know, to me it looked like pretty much it looked like a new car. I mean, it you couldn't even tell it had been in an accident. And I it rode fine. It drove fine. I drove it for probably two or three weeks. One day, I left my office. I went over. I was just going through an intersection, crossing a street, just a little crown in the road. I was maybe going five, six, seven miles an hour. And when I got to the other side of that crown in that road, there's a little bit of a dip there. And when I hit that dip, I completely lost control of the car. The steering wheel just did a hard left, as did my front wheels. I actually ended up in the oncoming lane of traffic, but it's a small side street. Nobody was there, fortunately. After they inspected it, they found that the tie rod had broken. That got damaged during that front end accident, maybe a month earlier, three weeks earlier. And I've often thought, what if that tie rod had broken and I had lost control at 70 miles an hour on the freeway? So 
that was in the back of my mind when I first experienced this accident where this semi backed into the front of my motorcycle. So I did lobby Progressive pretty hard in the beginning to get the motorcycle totaled as opposed to having it repaired. But when we come back, I'm going to tell you what changed my mind. There's one communication I had with someone that turned me around on this thought and made me much more comfortable with the idea of having the motorcycle repaired as opposed to replaced. Of course, even if Progressive did total the motorcycle, they're only going to give me market value on a bike this age. So I'd probably be out at least 10 or 15 grand to purchase, say, a new 2023 model. Now, I could make that claim against the insurance company, uh, the truck driver's insurance company, since the accident was their fault or his fault. Uh, there certainly, and that could still happen. I can't really talk about any of that right now because there are lawyers involved and I've been advised not to get into it on video. So just a few days after this accident, I reached out to the one person that I know probably knows more about the front end of the Honda Goldwing than anybody in the country, maybe the world. And that's Max McAllister at Traction Dynamics. I mean, these guys have worked on hundreds of Honda Goldwings, and so I'm sure he's taken the front end apart on numerous uh, sixth generation Goldwings. Max fired back an email to me after I sent him an email explaining the accident and sent him photographs of the accident. And I'm just going to read you a portion of the email he sent back to me. I would not be as worried as you are. The front components take a hundred times more impact simply hitting a single pothole. Never mind a million potholes over the life of the motorcycle. I would not have any concerns about owning that bike after this accident. It will be just as good as new. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is what changed my mind about having the motorcycle repaired as opposed to totaled and replaced. Now, let's move past that and talk about what you could do to prepare for a situation like this should it ever happen. The B Block of tonight's episode is brought to you by Break Free. Now, you may not be familiar with Break Free, but if not, you should be. You may have noticed an interesting light mounted to the back of my helmet in many of my videos. I never ride my motorcycle without a helmet, and I never wear my helmet without my Break Free light. This rechargeable battery-operated light is one of the most effective safety devices that I own. It has a built-in decelerometer, so as you begin slowing down to come to a stop, the already bright LED running light becomes an even brighter red LED to get the attention of these numbskulls behind you that are addicted to their cell phones and not paying attention. Do yourself and your loved ones a favor and get a break-free light for your motorcycle helmet. And I want to thank Break Free for sponsoring this video. So God forbid you ever have a motorcycle accident when you're on a road trip or away from home like I did. But those things do happen, and there might be some suggestions I can make that could better prepare you for that eventuality in the future. First, I was pretty lucky that I was only 45 miles from my brother's house in an area that I was pretty familiar with, West Texas, which is where I grew up. So if I had been in the middle of nowhere, say out in Arizona or New Mexico, all the circumstances would have been completely different. So when you're planning a road trip on a motorcycle, it might be a good idea to always know where the nearest 
I'd say metropolitan or larger town or city is just in case of this sort of an eventuality because that's probably where you'll end up having to stay or where you'll have to have your motorcycle towed to. Look for a city that has a Honda dealer, a city that has an airport, so you may have to travel back home on an airplane if your motorcycle won't run like mine, where it won't, you can't ride it, basically. These are things that you just don't always tend to think about. Now, in my case, I wasn't thinking real clearly. I probably was in a little bit of shock because all this happened very quickly, as it always does. So I didn't really take the time to think of all of these potential issues. Now, you definitely need to have some sort of roadside assistance or towing package or towing program so that if your motorcycle has to be towed, just the towing 45 miles, my motorcycle, was $850. Now, my progressive policy covers that, and they actually reimbursed me. I had to pay for it up front using a credit card. In fact, the tow truck driver didn't even want to take a credit card. I guess most people ride a motorcycle with $850 in cash on them. In this scenario, we're going to assume that you're uninjured and that you don't require hospitalization. I was very lucky, uh, even though I did sustain a little hip injury. I was completely conscious. I was alert. I was able to communicate. I was able to, to walk. If you are in a situation where you have to be hospitalized or go in an ambulance to a hospital while somebody else deals with your motorcycle, that's a whole different story. I can't get into that right now. But assuming that you're uninjured, make sure you call the police and ask for a police report. Now, I think I had to purchase that police report. It wasn't expensive because in my case, I was not at fault. The other driver was at fault. The other driver received a citation. I was also fortunate that I had a witness to this entire accident, and the witness was willing to turn his truck around, come back, and actually talk to the police and explain to them what he saw and what happened. And that brings me to another point. You may not have a witness, so it's a good idea to have a dash cam installed on your motorcycle. One of the first things the policeman asked me when he pulled up, he saw my, my GoPro camera and he asked me, did you have the camera turned on? Do you have video of this? And I said, no, I didn't. Make sure you take a lot of photos of the accident site, the vehicle that hit you or you hit or if there is another vehicle, just make sure you get a lot of pictures of the damage of your motorcycle and the scene of the accident. That's going to come in very important down the road. Contact your insurance company as soon as possible. Ask the repair shop if they will keep all of the parts they removed from your motorcycle so that you can inspect them or maybe even take them with you. I didn't do that, and I wish I had. Now, not all repair shops are going to do that for you, but it doesn't hurt to ask, and I wish now I had done that. That way you, you know what they removed from your bike. There's a lot of parts that are internal that I can't see, so I really don't know if they replaced them or not. Now, these are just some of the suggestions I've come up with. If you've got any other tips or suggestions, please don't hesitate to put those in the comments of this video down below. My viewers would really appreciate it, and so would I. Now, when we come back, I'm going to respond to some of your comments pertaining to this accident. Welcome back to this special edition of Crown and Comments and the final episode of Wreck to Ride. Now, this segment is brought to you by Bond Body Armor. As motorcyclists, we are very vulnerable should we come in contact with the road or some other object. And the older we get, the more vulnerable we are. Wearing proper protective gear is a must. I never ride a motorcycle without a DOT-approved helmet, riding gloves, preferably leather, riding boots, a riding jacket, and of course, Bond body armor. 
Bond Body Armor has a variety of riding shirts, pants, and jackets, all of which will accept their new CE Level 2 body armor. I replaced the included armor in my Olympia jacket with Bond's CE Level 2 armor because it was lighter, more flexible, and more impact resistant than the armor that came with the jacket. And if you like to ride with blue jeans, as I often do, check out the cool air mesh riding pants that you can wear underneath your jeans. They are great for summer riding because they keep you cool. And of course, Bond Body Armor has all season gear and gear specifically designed for cold weather riding. Now I know from experience that Bond's CE Level 2 armor is effective. When I fell off my gold wing, I landed on my right hip and I rolled over onto my right elbow and shoulder. And I didn't sustain any injuries at all on my elbow, my shoulder. I did on my hip because, like an idiot, I was not wearing my Bond armor under my jeans. And I want to thank Bond Body Armor for sponsoring this video. Okay, let's get to your comments. I've got my uh, MacBook Pro over here, and I'm going to read some of these to you, and I will give you my response. This is from Mike H., or oh, High Cruise Man, he starts out, I was done with that dealership when I saw the forklift pick it up. Obviously, you need to check the underside. You know, Mike, I was a little concerned when they had a forklift also. I was thinking maybe they would have some sort of a, a, a dolly that they could put the front end on and wheel it off the trailer, but they didn't. Fortunately, I have the traction belly pan or under uh, engine guard installed, and the forklift perfectly fit right under that engine guard, and... I didn't see any damage or I see no evidence of any issues. That belly pan held up superbly. Thank you for the comment, but I think it turned out okay, as it turns out. I'm not sure if another belly pan would have survived having the entire weight of the motorcycle picked up by that forklift, but the traction held up just fine. Okay, this is from David Allen. I recently had my Goldwing serviced at a Honda main dealer here in the UK. They scratched two panels very noticeably when reassembling my bike. They didn't tell me. I noticed it myself. After a bit of standoff, they relented and will pay for and fit replacements at no cost to me. Moral of the story, check every square inch of the bike before accepting it back. Well, if you saw my first video in this series, that's exactly what I was doing. I was inspecting every painted panel on that motorcycle. And even then, I still missed some things. But fortunately, uh, my motorcycle didn't seem to sustain any cosmetic damage as a result of the repair. So that's good. Thank you, David, for that comment. Jeff Ward said, the bike is just a business tool for you. I would guess so, probably not emotionally tied to it. I would buy a new bike and create content around the purchasing process. You'll never be satisfied with the fixes, so why put yourself through that? Well, Jeff, that was kind of my initial reaction. That was that was exactly what I thought was going to happen. Um, I wouldn't say I'm not emotionally tied to this bike. I am because I've put a lot of time and effort into installing accessories, ceramic coating the paint, correcting the paint. I've put a lot of time and effort in just maintaining the motorcycle. And it's been a big part of this YouTube channel for the last five years. So I wouldn't say I'm not emotionally tied to the bike. I, I am. And I just got done putting on the larger 2021 trunk kit. So, you know, I've got a lot invested both financially and just in my own effort into this motorcycle. Um, I'm hoping you're wrong about never feeling comfortable or... Uh, being satisfied with the bike again right now today as we sit here today i'm satisfied so let's see how it goes thanks jeff for that comment to anno green i hope i'm saying that correctly what about the reflector lights on the front wheel arms now he's referring to the front reflectors on the front fork and i asked 
Midland Power Sports to leave those off because I had the show chrome marker lights on the front fork and I told my progressive rep have them order the replacement lights but I want to install them I really didn't want the dealership having to get into my electrical uh, accessory electronics that I've installed on the motorcycle because kind of have my own way of doing things and I didn't just want to risk them wiring something up wrong or accidentally causing a problem with that so that's on me. I asked them to leave those lights off. They did replace them with a brand new set of show chrome marker lights. I have those. They're going to be installed probably in the next few days. So thank you for the comment. But that's how that turned out. John Salvi said, get it up to speed and see what happens. Try hard braking on several occasions, trail braking, accelerating while braking, slingshot, and do maneuvers and see what happens. Uh, and he goes on, John, I did, I did that. That's what I did on the ride home. I didn't videotape all of it. I didn't film it uh, or I edited it out, uh, but I did. I did a lot of uh, more or less high speed lane changes. I took my hands off the wheel to see how straight the bike would track. I r purposely ran over some bumps to see if I could hear anything or feel anything different. And honestly, I didn't. It, it like I said, it rides like a brand new Goldwing. It, I, I see no issues at all with the repair. Rick Martin said, you're not being picky. Why are you having to clean the bike? A good dealership shouldn't or wouldn't deliver any serviced bike dirty. And when I had an accident, Progressive Rep took care of everything and did not deny anything. My bike with similar damage was delivered, and I think he goes on to say delivered, you know, basically in mint condition. Uh, Rick, I'm going to talk about my experience with Progressive in the last segment of this video, so, you know, don't miss that. As far as the bike being dirty, I specifically asked them not to wash the bike. Uh, April at Midland Power Sports called me when the bike was ready and she said, we just need to take it and wash it for you and get it cleaned up. They did offer to do that. I specifically asked them not to do that. I said, please don't wash it. I'm going to bring a pistol grip sprayer and clean the bike myself because I wanted to get more intimately see kind of the condition of the motorcycle before it had been cleaned. I didn't want anybody to artificially change anything. I asked them not to wash the motorcycle. Abe Zeke said, this dealership is terrible. You are a known person and they did this bad of a job. Imagine what they would do with an average person. Well, Abe, I appreciate that, but I don't know how well known you you know, I really am. I mean, I'm known in this community. I don't think this is a big Goldwing dealership. I doubt that they've ever heard of me before. Uh, when I dropped the bike off, I had on a Cruise Man's Garage t-shirt. I had on my cap. Nobody said anything. So I don't think, you know, I'm not that, you know, well known. I am within my community here on YouTube, but motorcycle dealers, Honda dealers, that I don't think they could care less, so or they couldn't care less. Anyway, thank you, Abe. I appreciate that. But I think they treated me just like they would anybody else. Clay said, if you have a problem with a repair done away from where you live, it's next to impossible to get it remedied at no cost at any other dealer. It's not a Honda USA or a warranty problem. It's a problem for the dealership that did repairs to resolve. I hope you get that TPMS fixed easily and hopefully no more gremlins. Well, Clay, make sure you watch the last segment because I'm going to talk about a situation just like this. I don't want to give it all away right now, but thank you, Clay, for that comment. MFM said, Ugh, as bad as watching paint dry. I think I replied to this comment by saying, maybe you're watching the wrong color paint. There's always one. There's always one. Road Glide. You guys know Road Glide. He comments all the time. Agree on the brake free. It's lightweight, high lumen LED. 
visibility, high up above the brake lights where vehicles approaching. He goes on to talk about uh, Bond armor and how he wears Bond armor and he likes the brake free. Completely agree. Thank you, Road Glide. Hope all of you are supporting our sponsors. Kyle Carroll says, I saw you coming through Stanton about 7.45 a.m. Thought that was you. Glad to see you back on the road. Safe travels. This was during my uh, part two episode where I rode back from Midland to Dallas. Well, Kyle, uh, shout out to you and, and all of you in Stanton. I didn't know anybody in Stanton to recognize me. And Jelly Dick, I, I don't make up these names. This is what they give me. Said, that gold wing will never be right. Well, Jelly, I hope you're wrong. I really do. Uh, right now, it feels right. I don't detect any issues with the frame or structurally, uh, but I know where you're coming from. And that was my first impression when I saw the photos. And of course, I was there. I saw what happened. Max thinks it will be right. And that's good enough for me. So thanks for the comment. Anyway, let's just hope that's not the case. Now, when we come back, I'm going to tell you my experience with Progressive Insurance and Midland Power Sports. You are not going to want to miss this. The final segment of tonight's special episode of Crown and Comments is brought to you by Keyson Electronics, the makers of the Pathblazer headlight modulator and the Tailblazer brake light modulator. I already mentioned earlier about the dangers of getting rear-ended while riding your motorcycle. So anything you can do to increase your visibility to drivers coming up from the rear is a good thing. And that's why every motorcycle that I've owned since 2006, when I had my first Goldwing, has had the Tailblazer installed from Keyson Electronics. Keyson makes the Tailblazer for virtually every brand of motorcycle, and the installation is really simple. On the Goldwing, it's virtually plug and play. Once installed, anytime you apply your brakes, the tailblazer will cause your brake lights to flash rapidly at first, then slowly returning to a steady brake light. Now, this lets drivers behind you know that you're slowing down and coming to a stop. Thank you, Keyson, for being a sponsor of this video series. I switched to Progressive Insurance about two years ago after Dairyland raised my rates to a ridiculously high rate. And in my opinion, for no reason, because I have a perfect driving record. I haven't had a ticket in over 30 years. And I believe some of you had even recommended that I check into Progressive, so I did. And that's who I went with. I should also mention right up front, Progressive is not sponsoring this video in any way. They're not paying me to say good things or they have no idea what I'm going to say in this segment of the video. Now, just a few hours after the accident, uh, after I had dropped the motorcycle off at Midland Power Sports, I had returned back to my brother's house. It was a Saturday, so Progressive's offices are closed, but I was able to go onto their website and fill out a claim form for this accident and give you know all of the details. I think I even uploaded some photos. I don't remember for sure. First thing Monday morning, I got a call from Jessica at Progressive, who would be my main adjuster, claims adjuster contact at Progressive throughout this entire ordeal. Now, throughout this entire period over the last couple of months, Jessica stayed in very close contact with me. Anytime I emailed her with any questions, she would always get back to me very promptly and give me an answer to whatever I had, any question I had. Uh, the communications were extremely good. Fortunately, Progressive actually has a local adjuster there in Midland named Antonio, I believe. 
And he deals with Midland Power Sports, or he has in the past and does, I think, on a fairly regular basis. So not many insurance companies have a representative in Midland or in West Texas. I think he may actually live in Odessa, but that's only 20 miles away. Antonio, like Jessica, very good communications. Uh, he would routinely call me on the phone or send me emails or texts if I needed photographs. He went to the dealership, took pictures of the bike before the work started, and kept me apprised of everything that was going on with Midland Power Sports since I'm 350 miles away back here in Dallas. Now, the final adjuster that I dealt with at Progressive was Umberto, and he actually came out to my home after I returned back with the motorcycle from Midland. And he, even though the repairs had all been done, and as far as Progressive was concerned, they were kind of out of it, there were some things that were overlooked or missed during this entire repair process. And he came out to kind of verify those things and take a look at the bike. Now, as I mentioned in part one of this series, the black meter panel that kind of sits underneath the windshield still had a scratch on it and apparently it was not replaced. And I wanted Umberto to come out and take a look at that to verify that I wasn't imagining things, that, that it had obviously not been replaced and it was scratched in the same position where the truck had impacted the front of the motorcycle, which he did. They also didn't replace the red wheel stripes on my front wheel. And there was also a little tiny nick on the windshield. When I turned the motorcycle off and the windshield retracted, it actually, the bottom edge of the windshield struck part of the truck and put the tiniest little nick in it. Now, Umberto was able to confirm all of these things I had mentioned. And he, like Jessica and Antonio, was very pleasant to deal with, very easygoing, very, just very helpful. And before the end of the day, I was actually reimbursed for the cost of the red wheel stripes, a brand new windshield from F4 Customs, in spite of the fact that it was just a tiny little nick, and they even reimbursed me for the cost of the Avalon King ceramic coat because, as I mentioned to them, I was going to have to ceramic coat the front fender and that windshield garnish because the rest of the bike had been ceramic coated and uh, that was just an additional expense. Well, they included that as well. So I have nothing but good things to say about Progressive Insurance. They met or exceeded my expectations. They pretty much covered the cost of everything. They reimbursed me for my towing, which was $850. And they basically paid for all of the parts and labor to get this motorcycle in like new condition. What more could I ask for? I really can't think of anything. So if you're considering changing insurance companies, based on the experience I just had, I could highly recommend that you look into at least compare the rates of Progressive. But what about about that black meter panel. Let me rewind and play back what I said just a couple of minutes ago. I was actually reimbursed for the cost of the red wheel stripes, brand new windshield from F4 Customs. They even reimbursed me for the cost of the Avalon King ceramic coat. So what about the meter panel? Well, Umberto confirmed that Progressive had actually paid Midland Power Sports for that meter panel and the 2.1 hours of labor to replace the meter panel. But he informed me that since Progressive has already paid Midland Power Sports for that, they don't really have a mechanism for getting that money back from Midland Power Sports. That that would be kind of on me. That's my, was my place to contact Midland Power Sports and request a refund, or I guess I could have taken my motorcycle back to Midland and had them replace it. But since I'm 350 miles away, that's not really feasible. And that brings me to my review of Midland Power Sports. This is gonna kind of be a mixed bag review. Some good, some not so good. Okay, first, I did speak to the service manager at Midland Power Sports over the phone. I was in Dallas, he was in Midland, 
And I did ask that I was able to speak with the service tech that was going to be working on my bike before they started disassembly of the motorcycle. I have some parts I've installed. I wanted to make sure they knew what was going on. I had a few things I wanted to relay to him. That never happened. I never got a call back from Midland Power Sports, and I never got to talk to the service tech. The next thing I know, they already had the bike under repair. That's bad. Now, they did actually replace the front fork, the front wheel, the disc brakes, the uh, ABS sensor, some other major components to deal with steering, and it appears that those were done in a very competent manner. That's good. Second item was some of the trim pieces were not reinstalled before I went to pick up the bike. You, you saw the little black trim piece on the windshield. And just yesterday, I noticed, I got down low enough to notice that the lower cowls on both sides of the engine were not reinstalled correctly. There are some tabs that are supposed to go inside the inner front cowl, and instead they were sticking outside. And this caused the fog light covers to not line up correctly. So I had to remove those lower cowls and reinstall them yesterday. That's bad. It's just kind of sloppy. So I guess I have to assume that this shop does not work on gold wings on a regular basis. So whoever the techs were probably just aren't familiar with the gold wing and some of these nuances. Maybe they need my maintenance videos to guide them through these things. But fortunately, these were small things. They were easy for me to fix. Now, the third thing was they were paid by Progressive to replace that meter panel, and they were paid for 2.1 hours of labor at $149 per hour, I might add, and the meter panel was not replaced. And that's bad. Now, per Umberto's suggestion, I sent an email to Midland Power Sports a couple of days after I met with Umberto, and I mentioned to them that the meter panel had not been replaced and that Progressive had confirmed that it had not been replaced and that they basically owed me a refund for the meter panel and the 2.1 hours of labor. Within a couple of hours, I got an email back from Midland Power Sports more or less apologizing for the honest mistake, which it certainly could have been. And they said that they would be mailing me a check for the total amount of the part and the labor that day. Is there that day or the next day? So that's good. And also, Midland Power Sports did get the bike back to me in just under two months, which for what I consider to be a pretty major repair, I think that's reasonable. So I think that's pretty good. While I don't think Midland Power Sports would be my first choice for Goldwing repair and maintenance, all in all, they did get the bike, the major components back together, it seems correctly right now. If the front wheel comes flying off tomorrow, I'll have a different opinion. But for now, everything, the bike rides good, it feels good, it sounds good. I have no complaints. So they seem to have gotten the big stuff done correctly, and that is good. I was also very concerned that the motorcycle was going to sustain some cosmetic damage. Either the seat was going to get marred up because those seats mar very easily, or some of the painted parts would get scratched, or maybe even the center panel would get broken or damaged. None of that happened. All of my fears for that were unfounded. So the bike looks as good as it did you know, before I had the accident. So that's good. Okay, so that's enough of my complaining, my bitching, and my moaning for one night. I do want to once again thank my sponsors, Bond Body Armor, Break Free, and Keyson Electronics for stepping up and sponsoring this series of videos. It really does help offset some of the expenses. I had to fly back and forth to Midland a couple of times and uh, other expenses that I'm not going to get into right now. Also, a big thank you to Max McAllister who, with Traction Dynamics who really put my mind at ease about having the motorcycle repaired. I think I'd have been a basket case if he hadn't come back and said what he said. And of course, a huge thank you to all of those of you who watch my videos. Take the time to click the like button or subscribe 
And even when you post comments, especially positive comments in the comment section, those things really do help the YouTube channel uh, and they, they make a huge difference. So thank you for suffering through all these ad breaks because that helps pay for the cost of making the videos. I know nobody likes ads. I hate them as much as you do, but I appreciate uh, your support throughout this, all your comments of support uh, through this accident and the repair process. And I think we can finally put this accident, hopefully, hopefully we can sort of put it to bed. I'll be making a few other videos about some things I'm going to be replacing and doing that kind of relate to it, but for the most part, it's over. Okay, that's it for Crown and Comments, July 2020, no, June 2023. I don't want to get ahead of myself because next month on Crown and Comments, you know what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about the 2024 Honda Goldwing. So you're not going to want to miss that. Until then, remember what I always say, ride often, but ride safe.